Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a new lecture in your class. And in this video, we are going to install Amazon AWS CLI or command line interface. Now, why do you need to install or to use a CLI interface? Well, we have mentioned in section one of this class that Amazon has two ways of letting you manage your infrastructure on AWS, which is using the GUI or the graphical user interface that we have seen in the previous video when you created your account and you created a user for your daily access. And this is the this is the GUI of Amazon AWS. But as a DevOps engineer and as a professional system administrator, you shouldn't be using the GUI for your repetitive tasks. That is because the CLI allows you to create scripts to automate your repetitive tasks. Those scripts may talk to other services and their output may be fed to other services and other scripts to, tr to create a true DevOps automated environment. So you must know how to use Amazon CLI. You must be very proficient in Amazon CLI to create scripts that will bring about automation to your environment. So AWS CLI in installation, we're gonna start with Windows. And on a Windows machine, we have two methods of installing CLI, either using the Ubuntu bash extension, but this requires Windows 10 anniversary edition or later to be used or using the SIGWIN application or package, and that is if you are using an older Windows machine. So if you are using the latest Windows 10 at the time of this recording, it's Windows 10 Anniversary Edition, you can use the Ubuntu Bash extension. This will provide a Bash environment for you. The Bash environment, of course, if you are coming from a Linux environment, the Bash is the Linux shell. It provides a Bash-like shell that can be used on Windows. But if you are not using the latest version of Windows 10, if you are using Windows 8 or Windows 7, you can use the SIGWIN. We are going to see how to use both of those methods in this video. So in order to use the first method, we are going first to click on the start and type settings. Go to settings and in settings, you're going to click on update and security and click on for developers at the left hand side and click on developer mode. This will enable you to install the bash shell. Click yes. It's going to take some time. going to speed up the video here. Okay. And it's going to need you to restart your PC. So I'm going to restart. Okay, and once you're back, click on start again and type programs and features or prog just to get you inside the control panel. Okay, click on control panel, then programs, then turn Windows features on and off. Okay, then you're going to scroll down until you see the Windows subsystem for Linux beta. Click OK. Check on it, of course, and click OK. It will take some time till it installs the package. And it's going to ask you to restart your system again. So let's restart it. OK, we're back. Then click on the start and type bash, just like this. OK. And I have saved you this installation. It took me about 15 minutes to install. It's going to ask you for a username and a password for the bash shell. And once it is done, you can click again on start and type bash. You're going to see bash on Ubuntu for Windows. It's going to give you this window, which is the bash shell on Windows. As you can see, you can type pwd, you can type any bash command. It's going to just work. So this concludes the first method. Let's have a look at the second method, which is using SIGWIN. So let's minimize this window and let's go to our Internet Explorer, click on Google, we're going to search for SIGWIN installation, download SIGWIN, just like that. Okay, go in the first result and click on setup for x8664, which is our architecture, click save and then run, click yes for the prompt and follow the wizard just next and next, and next, and next. Okay, it's just gonna download, choose the first meter, or whatever meter you desire, click next. It's gonna take some time till it installs the components, 
and let's click next for here for the time being. I'm gonna return to this later. Click next. It's gonna now load all the packages that Sigwin needs to be installed on the system. I'm just gonna speed up this video in order not to bore you. Okay. Click on any prompt that appears to you and at the end just click finish. Sure that you have a desktop icon and start menu icon and you're done. Let's minimize this and now we have this icon on our desktop, SIGWIN terminal. Double click on it and you have a SIGWIN terminal. This is a bash-like shell just like the Ubuntu machine. And now we are going to start installing the Amazon CLI. So on the Ubuntu shell you can install it by using the package manager that comes pre-bundled with, with this shell. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna type sudo apt-get install aws cli. Okay, press yes for the prompt and leave it to download. Again, I'm gonna speed up the video. Okay, it's done. Let's clear the screen and type aws on the console. And if you have this output, you have successfully installed aws. Now let's move on to the SIGWIN terminal and this time we will need to install pip because Amazon CLI is just a Python application, it's just a Python package so it can be installed using the Python package manager which is called pip. If you have programmed with Python before you sure have come across pip which is the program or the tool used to download Python packages off the internet. So SIGWIN does not come pre-installed with Python at the default installation so you will have to install python and pip manually after it has been installed of course we could have done that during the installation but i just want to show you how you can install missing packages from sigwin once it has been installed in your system just go to your downloads folder or whatever place you downloaded the setup of sigwin file just the file that we have downloaded a few moments ago click on that file setup to bring the wizard again click yes of course and follow the steps that SIGWIN will present to you until you come across this screen. Here you are allowed to choose the packages that you want to install. Just choose full to give you all the packages. Full, it's the first option here. And search for pip, P-I-P, just like that. As you can see here, we have Python pip for Python 3 and 2. I'm going to choose 2. Just click on skip to let it be installed. Then click on next and leave it to download any dependencies and any packages that are needed. Gonna forward this video. Okay, and let's click finish. And now if you go to SIGWIN again and type pip, okay, you're gonna see that it is installed, it's giving you the help message. So let's clear the screen and use it to install Amazon AWS CLI. So it's pip install. AWS CLI, just like that, and we're gonna leave it to collect the package. Okay, it has installed the package successfully. Now let's type AWS, click enter, and okay, it's giving us the help message, which means that it has been installed. Now let's move on to Ubuntu, open the terminal, and again, I can use sudo apt install AWS CLI, click on yes, and it is going to download the package of the internet and install it. Very, very easy installation. Just one line of code and you are done. Clear the screen. Type AWS. Okay, you have the help message. That means that it is installed. Let's go to CentOS. Do the same thing. But this time we are going to use the pip installation. So open a terminal. And pip is not found by default in CentOS. So we will need to install it. But this is not a SIGWIN environment, so we are going to install it using the manual way, using curl to download the package from this URL, bootstrap.pypa.io slash getpip.py, then python get-pip.py, dash dash user to install it for the current user. Okay, it's installed pip. Let's now make a very important change to our bash profile. And this change is going to ensure that your path includes .local slash bin. And this is the default location where Amazon CLI is going to be installed on CentOS machines. So you will need to ensure that this path is in your path variable in order to be able to use the AWS CLI commands from anywhere on your shell 
you, and, and you don't have to specifically type the full path to the command. So let's go to slash bash underscore profile, go to the end of the, of the file and type export path equals the home directory dot local slash bin then dollar sign path at the end okay now let's source dot bash profile to affect those changes to the current session and now let's pip install ewsli cli dash dash upgrade dash dash user to get the latest version for the current user let it install it Okay, now it's done. Let's clear the screen and type AWS. Okay, we have the help screen, which means that AWS has been successfully installed on CentOS. Now, let's move on to the Mac, which we are going to use for the rest of this class. And we are going to use the manual way of installing pip. Again, the same way we did with CentOS. Okay, press enter and then Python. You're going to have to use sudo for that get pip.py password for my account and it has successfully installed pip now let's use pip to install and okay of course upgrade at AWS CLI okay now let's clear the screen and notice here that AWS CLI on Mac machines is going to be installed in a default location that is different than CentOS. In CentOS, it was installed or deployed in the home directory of the current user dot local slash bin. On Mac machines, it's downloaded by default to library slash Python slash 2.7 slash bin slash AWS, which is the executable. And of course, Python 2.7 depends on the currently installed version of Python. So if you have a later version or an older version, of course, this 2.7 is going to be different. The important thing here is that you will have to add this path to your path variable. This library slash python slash 2.7 slash bin in your home directory, this path must exist in your path variable to be able to use AWS commands from anywhere in the shell without having to type the full path to the command. So let's go to our bash.profile. Let's first copy this path. Okay, and now let's go to dot bash underscore profile and let's export path equals okay and let's paste the path and then add a colon and dollar sign path okay let's exit and let's source bash underscore profile to affect the changes to the current session and now if I type AWS okay I have the the help message which means that AWS has been successfully installed. So throughout this video we have successfully installed AWS CLI on Windows 10 using both methods of installation using an Ubuntu Bash shell for the latest Windows 10 systems and also using the SigWin program for older versions of Windows. We've installed it on Ubuntu, on CentOS, on Mac. Now everything that we are going to use here on a Mac machine is going to be identical to any other platform from the ones that we have demonstrated here. So the next step after you install the AWS CLI is to configure it to use your credentials because whatever commands you're going to type using AWS, regardless of your operating system, regardless of your platform, are going to be signed by your credentials and sent to AWS servers to be executed there. So we'll have to configure the AWS CLI with your credentials before you can use it. And here you are going to use the CSV file that we have downloaded earlier in this section. Once you created your user, we downloaded the CSV file that contained its credentials. We are going to use this file now and grab the credentials out of it, the secret key and the access key to use them with AWS CLI. So in order to do that, we are going to type AWS configure, paste the access key, then paste the secret key, the default region name, you can add whatever region you desire and regions, as the name implies, uh, refer to the region where your servers are going to be physically hosted. Amazon has several regions wherever, where its uh, data centers are located. You can choose, for example, US-East-1, which is North Virginia, or you can use, I'm going to use here US-West-2, okay, and the output format 
if you did not type anything, it's going to default to JSON. This refers to the output of any command that you are going to type in Amazon. As you're going to see, most of the commands that you're going to type will give you some sort of output. Let's say, for example, it's going to describe your instance, the name of the instance, the IP of the instance, the firewall rules, and so on. This output needs to be in a specific format because maybe you want to use this output as an input to another script or another program or to be processed in one method or another. So you need some you need to specify a format for Amazon to send you this output in. So if you leave this output format empty, it's going to use JSON by default. You can use text if you want to. I'm going to just explicitly type JSON and click enter. It's, gonna, it's not going to give me any output, but you can type AWS IAM list dash users and it's going to give you your current user details which means that you have successfully configured AWS CLI for being used with your current user. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. Until next lecture, take care. Hello and welcome back. Okay, in the previous videos, we have successfully created our account, secured it using MFA, created a less privileged user account for our daily activities. And we have also installed Amazon CLI toolset on our platform. Now it's time to start getting our hands dirty. We need to start creating an instance. In order to create an instance, you must first choose which AMI you want to use for your instance. But what is an AMI? AMI is short for Amazon Machine Image. This is just like a box containing the operating system together with other required software that is, that is needed to start it. So for example, if you want to have a Linux machine running RHEL version 7.4, there is one specific AMI for that with a specific ID. When you use that ID, you will have a machine already having Red Hat Enterprise Linux installed and running. You don't have to install anything. If you remember from the previous section of this class when we said that platform as a service refers to the cloud provider providing you with the operating system already installed. You don't have to install it, you don't have to configure it, it is already installed for you. Even the users and the credentials are already created. So you will need to know which operating system you want to use and this will be the AMI ID. And if you want to have an idea about the different AMIs that are available on Amazon, let's have a look at this URL. Okay, so this is the EC2 management console, the GUI version, of course. And here it is showing you all the different AMIs that you can use with your instance. So have a look here. We have Amazon Linux AMI. This is the AMI ID. We need to have a look at this ID. You need to take a note of this ID. We have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Zay, Ubuntu, Microsoft Windows, and others. And notice here that each AMI is having this label or not. So those, for example, are free tier eligible. This means that they can be used with your free trial. That is a 12 months period that we have talked about at the start of this section. Some of those are not free for the, are not free tier eligible like this one. For example, Microsoft Windows 2016 with SQL Server Express. And notice here that this, for example, this AMI comes pre-installed with an SQL Server. You don't have to install the SQL Server. This one is installed with the express version. This one is installed with the web version. This is the standard version. Of course, each one of those, depending on the type of software that is installed, will vary in its price, will vary in the costs. Okay. And take, an, take note here at this upper right icon here. This is where your data center is located. This is where your data center is physically located. Now, when I configured the AWS CLI command, I configured it to use US West 2. This is the Oregon state or the Oregon located data center. So if I want to take a copy of the AMI ID to be used with my creation process, I'm going to have to choose this data center or this region as it is called in, a in Amazon AWS terminology. It is going to refresh the page for me and it is going to show me the same AMIs but with different IDs and that is very important because if you used an ID from a different region and tried to install it or to run it on a, a the region that you have configured your Amazon CLI for, 
it will fail. It will just tell you that the AMI ID is not found. And this is a hard to debug error. Okay, now let's take a look at this AMI ID. Can have a copy of this ID because we're going to use it in our creation process. So in my command line, a good idea is to export this environment variable like this AMI ID equals and I'm gonna paste this ID now whenever I want to use it just echo dollar sign AMI ID it's gonna give me the MI the AMI ID I'm gonna use this in my command so as you can see now this is the power of using the CLI you can just save a variable somewhere in your terminal or in a file or in a database for example and you can refer to it later and of course this can be done unattended this is one of the merits of using cli is that you can create a script and run it unattended in a scheduled job for example okay let's return back to our topic so now we have the ami id and we haven't talked about amazon linux amazon linux is a variant of rpm based machines it's uh this it works the same like red hat enterprise linux and centos fedora and other rpm based machines but it is more suited to be run on an aws instance and it is one of the operating systems or one of the I, or one of the AMIs that are eligible for the free tier. So it is an excellent candidate for our demonstration. So if you want to build an EC2 instance for our project, we're going to need the AMI ID. And we have already got that. And we are also going to have an instance type. The instance type is the scale or the size of the image that you want to run. The size of the machine that you want to run. And this size, of course, is directly proportional with the costs that you are going to pay. Because when I'm referring to the size, I'm referring here to the power of the machine, how much memory you want this machine to have, how much CPU cores you want this machine to have, and so on. So if you want to have a look at the an example of the instance types that Amazon provides, can I have a look at this URL? Okay. So these are the different types of EC2 instances. It's ranging from the T2 Nano. As you can see, it's very tiny, as the name suggests. It's a very tiny instance. It's having one virtual CPU and 0.5 gigabytes of memory. That is roughly 512 megabytes of memory. And as you can see, the model is growing up as the instance changes from T2 Nano to T2 Micro, small, medium, large, X large, 2 X large, with 8 virtual CPUs and 32 gigabytes of memory. But you can also scale higher than that for going to the M4 instances. And it's like you see here, it starts with a virtual CPU of 2 and 8 gigabytes of memory till 64 virtual CPUs and 256 gigabytes of memory. As you can see here, it's just it's such a huge instance. It is more suited towards heavy types of computing. So these are the different types of of the instances. There are other types, as you can see here in this page. You can visit this page again and have a and have a more detailed look at the different types of instances. For our demonstration, we are going to use the T2 Micro. This one, it is best suited for our demonstration, and it is also eligible for the free tier. So now that we have the AMI ID and the instant type, we need now to create two things, the security group and the SSH key pair. And that's going to be the starting topic of next lecture. So see you next.